and welcome back to your daily devotional. Listen, come on in. I have missed you all, and I'm so excited that you have joined me today. For those of you who are joining for the first time, I'm Pastor Carrie, pastor of Emerging Generations here at New Birth, pastored by, of course, the one and only Dr. Jamal H. Bryant. Listen, I'm so excited that you all have joined me again today. I have so much that I want to share with you, but first, I want to make sure that you are sharing this. Invite all of your friends, all of your family to come in because I feel like these 15 minutes will bless you today. Not only that, you all know that I want to make sure that you stay connected with me and I have an opportunity to stay connected with you. The best way to do that is to follow me on Instagram at Ms. Carrie Baby. And of course, you know, you already know, I want you to stay connected with the ministry. And the greatest way to do that is simply by downloading the New Birth app. And you can do that right now. You can, of course, always visit us on Online at newbirth.org and everything that we do is hashtag new birth now. So listen, I have been so excited to share with you all some of what the Lord has been sharing with me in my devotional time. And so today I want to talk to you about fierce faith and expectancy, daring to live in the more, daring to live in the more. Listen, we are living in a time right now where it is so very easy to give up, to lose faith to lose hope, and to succumb to what seems impossible. But today I want to ask you, what are you expecting? What are you anticipating? What are you awaiting? What are you looking forward to? What are you hoping for? What are you easily anticipating and looking forward to in your life? Everything in your life and all that you desire remain predicated upon your constancy of expectation. To live in constant expectation is to live in the realm of conscientious faith. Hebrews 11 and 1 says to us, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Y'all know this. The evidence of what? Things not seen. To live in expectation is to live in the constant belief that there is more. More love more health, more wealth, more peace, more joy, more purpose, and more prosperity. It is living with the understanding that there is more beyond what you are currently experiencing. Listen, your life is an exact reflection of the measure of your faith and your level of expectancy. What do I mean? Matthew 9 and 29 says, this is one of my favorite scriptures, according to your faith, be it unto you. When we understand faith and expectancy in relationship with this particular text, this is what we know. Anything you expect, you can have it. This is the difference between those who succeed and those who don't. This is the difference between those who give up and those who persevere. This is what separates the wheat from the tare. This is the difference between those who take risks and those who don't have the courage to move outside of their comfort zone. This is the difference between those who watch and those who are watched faith and expectancy, knowing that if you believe it, you can have it. Listen, this isn't about the one who has the most money. It's not even about the one who has the most degrees. This isn't about the most connections, because can I give you a secret? You can't network your way into this. This isn't about the one who is the most gifted. It's not the mo- about the most talented. It's not even about the one who is the most anointed. But can I tell tell you, it is about the one who dares to live in the more with faith and expectancy. If you don't have what you are expecting right now, you've got to ask yourself the question, why don't I have it? Do I not have it because the principle is untrue or do I not have it because I've chosen not to work the principle? For many of us, we fail to believe that the principle is true because we fail to put into action the things that we need to do that are connected to faith and expectation so that we are able to see the manifestation in our life. Listen, it is so much easier to become obsessed with the circumstances that are around 
around you. It's easy to become obsessed with what you don't have, where you can't go and what you cannot do, rather than focusing on what did God say? What did God say I should have? Where did God say I should go? And what did God promise me I would be able to do? What I love about faith and expectancy is that you can't make excuses for it. With faith and expectancy, this is solely your responsibility. You can't shift the blame. You can't blame it on somebody else. You can't make excuses for what you don't have. It is your responsibility. The responsibility of faith and expectation starts and it ends with you. Why? Because there takes a level of discipline. There is a level of discipline, a level of blindness that you got to have when you are following God with faith and expectancy and all while having the ability to see all at the same time. One of y'all going to catch that next week. Listen, Hebrews 10 and 38 say to us, now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. To live is to exist. What does that mean? This means that your very existence, every breath you take, every move you make is predicated on faith. Everything you do should be a faith move. To live in faith and expectancy is to choose to live beyond the reality of what is being currently presented to you. Listen, the reality may say to you, you're broke. The reality may say to you, you're uneducated. The reality says to us sometimes that we are unloved. Our reality may say to us that we are unsuccessful, that we cannot have a healthy family, that we are unhealthy in our bodies. Some of our realities tell us that we are unattractive. Some of our realities say to us that we are stuck and we will never move beyond the space that we are at. But listen, to live in faith and expectancy, hear this, is to make the reality agree with the revelation. What does that mean? That means that there was a word that the Father has spoken over your life, not just in general, but even this year, even this day, and even at this moment. And there will be times where your reality may not agree with the revelation that the Father has given you. But can I remind you that we have the power through the Holy Spirit to make the reality agree with the revelation that the Father has given us. For some of us, we get tired too easy. We, we, we get discombobulated too easy. And we allow our reality to dictate what God has said about us. But listen, I want you to start declaring that regardless of what things look like around you, even when it doesn't make sense, even when it doesn't seem like it is lining up, I want you to begin to speak with your mouth the word of the Lord and begin to declare it over your circumstances. Lo, you have to start saying, listen, I'm not broke. I live in abundance. When your reality says to you that you are uneducated, you have to tell your reality that I have all wisdom and understanding. When your reality tells you that you are unloved, that you are rejected, that nobody wants you, that nobody wants to love you, you have to tell your reality, oh, but I am loved with the love of Christ because Christ first loves me. When you feel like you are a fan, Failure and nothing that you is doing is it can manifest and come forward. You have to tell your reality everything I touch, the Lord blesses. Everything I do, the Lord causes me to be successful and increase because I am in His will. When you feel unhealthy and your body is disagreeing with healing, you have to tell your body that divine health is my portion. When you feel like you are unattractive and you don't feel confident in the the design that God has made you, you have to tell yourself, I am beautiful for I am fearfully and I am wonderfully made. When you feel like you are not progressing and you cannot get ahead, when you feel like you are stuck, you have to say, I am not stuck for the Lord God causes me to advance and to triumph. You've got to begin. I don't care if you got to practice right now. Begin speaking to your reality according to what the Father has told you based upon faith 
and expectancy. The Bible tells us in Joshua 24 and 15, choose for yourselves, this is good, this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your fathers or, or the gods on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in which the land you dwell. He says, but for me and my house, y'all gotta pardon me, I know it's my 15 minutes, but I feel a little something, but as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. What does that mean every single day you have a choice to make. You have a choice to either believe whatever report is being given to you by the circumstances of your life, or you have a choice to believe whether or not you will abide by the principles of, of faith and expectancy and believe the report of the Lord. So the question that I challenge you with today is whose report will you believe? And what will you accept as true? And how will you begin to put this in action in your life? Hebrews 11 and 6 says to us, but without faith, without hope, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And not only that he is, but that he is a rewarder of what? Those who diligently, consistently seek him. The question that I wanna ask you today is do you believe God? In the midst of your current reality, in the midst of what COVID-19 might be telling you about your bills, about your job, about your purpose, and about your destiny, can you still diligently seek the Father based upon what you know he has said to you? Can you believe that he is still, hallelujah, a rewarder of those who will diligently seek him? Can you believe that he is still rewarding those who will get up in the morning and seek him early? Do you still believe that he is a rewarder of those who will take the time out of the day to read his word and to hide it in his heart as David said, that he might not sin against him? Can you believe that God is still a believer and allows us to stand on his word. Do you believe that God will still do it in the midst of what you see, even when your reality does not agree with the revelation? Listen, I want to challenge you this week. Y'all know I'm always giving you homework. I want to challenge you to max out in your faith and expectancy. I want to challenge you that if you are now believing the worst in your money, in your career, in your relationships, in your spiritual life, can I tell you, if you believe the worst, you will receive the worst, but can I also encourage you that if you are expecting success, if you are expecting abundance in every area of your life, that is exactly what you will receive. I'm challenging you to check yourself this week. Check yourself, and I want you to stretch your faith in expectation. Grab one or two scriptures, and I want you to begin to meditate on those scriptures so that they serve as accountability in your life. Meditate on them. Begin to speak on those scriptures. Speak those scriptures over your life. Hold fast to the thing that God is believe that you are believing God for with faith and expectancy. Listen, last week I had gotten so frustrated with something that I have believe been believing God for for years. I have it written in my journals. I have it on my wall. I have it in my vision book. I even have little things around that help me to remember. I got so angry. Can I can I just be transparent? I got so angry with the Father last week that I threw I threw it away. I just said, Lord, I don't even have the ability to believe. The Bible says that hope deferred makes the heart grow sick. But can I remind you today, whatever it was that you threw away, whatever it was that you put down, hallelujah, whatever it was that you believe that the Lord has forgotten about with you, I wanna encourage you to pick that thing back up again. I wanna encourage you to reposture yourself and know that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, not to shrink back, but to let go release control about how he's going to do it and when he's going to do it. But I dare you to stand still and to see the salvation of the Lord. Let God do his job. 
You do your job and you let God do his. Just be in position to hear God. And when he says move, move. When he says expect, expect. Listen, I pray that you have been blessed today. I'm always so glad to have you. I truly am praying for you and I hope that you are praying for me. On behalf of our pastor, Dr. Jamal H. Bryant, I'm so glad that you are here. We love you so much here at New Birth. If you say, Pastor Carrie, I want to join right now, you can do so by going going to newbirth.org. If you say, Pastor, I want to I wanna sow a seed right now into this word because I believe in going higher in my faith and expectancy. You can do that by using all of the tools listed below that will help you sow into what I know is good ground. I love you. Bless you. Have a wonderful week.